three, two. Wait, three, two. Look at my fanny pack. This is my first time trying to do a time lapse. Thanks, Mike, for having me on the show. <laughs> I sent list. my mom Christmas list and she and she sent back. Uh, it had like a manly candle and it had some bed sheets and a t-shirt and she sent back LOL. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, oh, yeah. mom's using manly candle. The, and I get a manly, What's a manly candle. candle like? Smells like leather and uh, rust. <laughs> <laughs> this one smells like punching. It smells oh! like piss. Piss and like, shit. It smells like. Why don't you love me, Dad? It smells like being crushed by modern feminism. It's lilacs, but it's actually just wax in a discarded potato chip bag. <laughs> yeah. Hey, good morning. Today's episode is all about introductions and introducing yourself. Now, a lot of people think introducing yourself is a super scary thing to do, and why is that? I think it's because we want other people to like us. No one introduces themselves to somebody that they want to hate them. Who are you, Inigo Montoya? My goal here today is to show you that there's really nothing to worry about. What's the worst thing that could happen? That person doesn't like you instantly? Who does that? Fuck that person. Let them go back to being a stranger from Stranger Town where they shot a lot of that show, The Stranger. I felt like you knew where I was going before I finished. Oh, but Mike, what if that person is important? What makes them so important? Do they have a cute dog? Do they have a Girl Scout cookie hookup? Do they have a Disney place fast pass? Do they have in-ground pool? What's so important about that person? How many important people do you know that don't give new things a fighting chance? Stranger Town. All you could do is introduce yourself to the best of your ability. Don't mumble. Be close, but not too close. Be respectful. Don't mumble. Now you may hear be respectful and be like, but what has that person done to earn my respect? Get over yourself. It will make you more likable. Make eye contact, smile, and when the time is right, say something super weird to see if they accept you for who you are. Cause life is short and you don't have time to waste with basics. For example, I, for years, have been substituting the word awesome with the word horny. And as you could probably imagine, that weeds people out pretty quick. Dave, Mike, horny to meet you. What? You're out, Dave. That's what? If you're your own biggest fan, it will never be a problem to introduce yourself to other people because you'll be like, oh, you gotta meet this guy. Just don't overdo it because then you're horrible and no one wants to talk to that person. Life is about finding balances and bathrooms, right? If you think about it. Yes. Enjoy the rest of the show. In my opinion, the coolest way to get the flu is to touch anything in the Apple store. Oh. Hi everyone, uh, we don't do many interviews on this show, but uh, we thought we'd give it a try because that's what happens during a morning show. Uh, here I'm joined by... <laughs> um... The... <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit. It's a. Uh, it's the devil. <laughs> the devil. Hey everybody, thank you for having me. So thank you for being here. Absolutely, man. I, I never. Studio. Thank you so much. It's just my apartment, but thank you for coming mm -hmm. into my home and mm -hmm. for for being in my home. Mm -hmm. I never thought we'd be talking, so I don't. I haven't really. <laughs> ever had any... Oh, Michael. We used to have many conversations back in the day. I don't know if you remember being mm, thirteen. <laughs> oh man. <clears throat> I'm talking about masturbation. Yeah. Or as you used to call it, Mikesturbation. Ah! I thought it was funny, but not, you know. Um, great. Point is, I never thought that we would sit down and, and talk like this in an interview setting, so I never really, um, I never thought of any questions to ask you. So forgive me if my questions seem basic, I guess. No, no problem. I've seen your show. Not, just not a surprise there. Not a fan of, the, of this show. Let's just say my agent didn't call me and say, hey, you know, it's live with Ryan and What's-Her-Face, you know. They said that uh, it was you. Well, maybe, maybe this is, uh, 
a, uh, on the trajectory, right? Because it's better than not having any morning show. You're on, you're on one. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll... While everyone's feeling froggy, let's leap into some current events. This comes from Twitter and the Twitter handle Kendall Piffer, Piffer, Peter Pifkin Pumpkin Eater. She shared a photo of her dad using a handbag as a harness, my favorite Stone Temple Pilots record, so he could easily cut their dog's nails and people were impressed. Very smart, very smart. He looks like a mechanic. I'm sure you could change that dog's oil from there too. Cut another hole or two in that thing and you may not even have to walk that dog anymore, right? You just put a bucket. This is funny, Kevin Garnett, one of the best basketball players of all time. No one knows how KG's hood stays on his head. Check this out, it's magic. This was one of those Twitter moments today, but I've been thinking about this shit for weeks. I don't know how it stays up there. This is like the first time I heard about boob tape, figured out what boob tape was at prom. And not cause I got lucky, just cause somebody told me about boob tape, the way you wanna learn about it. And it's always like this. And it's amazing because it's very much like his thing. Everyone knows that's KG's thing, but it's very nerve wracking. It's like the opposite of those satisfying videos that you see on Instagram where like the babies are whispering into sand or whatever. You know what I'm talking about. This is like the opposite of that because I'm always waiting for it to fall at any second and it never does. KG's head is like the last couple seconds of a game of Jenga all the time. Cornbread unboxing video. It's not, but I wouldn't not do that. I love, I love cornbread. Mike, I'm actually a college student, and I see this other college student everywhere. Of course you do. It's college. They're all over the place. We've got a real student infestation here at the University of Connecticut. I know he sees me too because he ate where I worked for years previous. I hope you worked at a restaurant. You're a hairdresser, and this guy's eating a cob salad at the sink next to you for three years. Run away. Mm. It's moist. It's not usually moist. How many years can go by before a stranger becomes an acquaintance? Acquaintance, question mark. I see him more than I see my grandmother. <laughs> Don't tell her that. I've heard his Starbucks order called a thousand times, and I know his name is Ethan. Information wise, you guys are on like the fourth date. It's creepier every semester, but to be clear, I have a boyfriend and I'm not interested in dating him. Otherwise, I would have just asked him out. Well, good. I guess a little bit. What's the problem now? All the pressure's off. Was he easier to talk to if you know you eventually want to see his wiener? Mike, I have almost no interest in seeing this dude's wiener. How do talk? Talk to him. Check on page. I'm actually very social, but the situation baffles me. At what point is it appropriate to just approach and say, hey, I know you very well because of this strange situation. Next time he's ordering, interrupt him and finish the order for him. And then slam money down on the counter and say, I'm Agent Hannah Rose. I've been following you for quite some time and we think you've got what it takes to join our elite crime fighting unit. I think we both know you have a great opportunity to do something real weird here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't say anything until Groundhog Day and then slip him a note that says, Ethan, it's me, Hannah. I've been living the same day over and over again. Then you grab the nearest couple and you say, this is Debbie Kleiser and her fiance, Fred. They're supposed to be getting married this afternoon, but Debbie's having second thoughts. I ran out of paper in this notebook or I would have given you a bunch more weird things to do. Hey, everyone else watching this video, why don't you go down to the comments section and give Hannah a bunch of weird things she could possibly do to this dude without getting arrested. Oh, and then Hannah, you don't do any of that stuff and realize that all of this overthinking and weirdness ends the second you introduce yourself. Well, maybe not that second, but a couple minutes afterwards. Maybe at least say you're from the future because you don't always get that type of a chance. Oh, hi, Mike Pazon. Uh, leaning in here for some bad furniture. Oh, no, some real bad furniture. Back to you, Mike.